welcome to The Wayfaring Panda. I'm Annette. Today I'm sharing a gift-giving idea for Christmas in July. And this one combines food with paper crafting. This summer I went to Maine and Vermont, so I bought some blueberry syrup and a lot of maple syrup. So a lot of my friends and family are going to be getting maple syrup for Christmas. So I thought flapjack mix would be great to give along with it. This mix makes enough for five or six batches, so you can give each batch individually to different people. I'm going to put them in mason jars where it'll hold enough for two batches. So to start with, you use four cups of quick-cut oats. You don't want to use the old-fashioned. It's the quick oats that you're using for this one. This video is part of a YouTube hop called Christmas Collab, and it's put on by Bug from Edier Ogre Crafts, and it's happening every Sunday in July. And anyone can participate if you'd like, if you have a YouTube channel and are a paper crafter. I'll put a link in the description below. Today's theme is gifts, so you'll get a lot of different gift ideas. And next week, the theme is posh. If you follow me, you know I do a lot of cute and interactive cards, so I have no idea what a posh card from Wayfaring Panda is going to look like, but I guess we'll find out next week. Then you add two cups of all-purpose flour. Now I'll put the recipe in the description below. I do have it on a PDF, and if I figure out how to attach that, I'll put that in the description also. Then add two cups of whole wheat flour. I didn't have any, so I used whole wheat white flour, which you can tell is not completely as white as the all-purpose. Then you add one cup of packed brown sugar. Now, if you don't really do any baking, when you measure brown sugar, you do have to pack it down into your measuring implement. In this case, it's a cup. Otherwise, you don't get the correct measurement. Now, I'm also using a light brown sugar if you don't bake much, you may not know that brown sugar comes in light and dark. You could use either one, but the dark will have a stronger flavor. Next, I'm adding one cup of dried or powdered milk. We used to get this at Shop and Save. That was the most economical place for us, but they went out of business. And since then, I found it in a bulk size at Gordon Food Service, which is near us. So you might need to shop around to see the best place for you to get it. Also add three tablespoons of baking powder. Uh, you are mixing all this together, so it really doesn't matter which order you put it in. And one teaspoon of cream of tartar. We were running low, so I was having trouble getting the spoon to fill up, but I had just a little bit left over. Two and a half teaspoons of salt. And then two tablespoons cinnamon. That seems like a lot, but remember this is for five to six batches of pancakes. Also, this is where the basic recipe ends, so if you just wanted to do flapjacks, because this does have a special flavor with all the different grains in here and the cinnamon, you could just stop here and stir it up, and I'll stir it a little bit. But I'm going to step it up a notch and add some pecans and apples. I hadn't done this before, so I wasn't sure how much I was going to add. So I started off with just a cup of chopped pecans and then a cup of chopped dried apples, but then I ended up adding another half cup. So I used one and a half cups of chopped pecans and one and a half cups of chopped dried apples. But you couldn't just do one or the other. You could do other things. You could do chocolate chips, dried blueberries, dried cherries, whatever you like. I'm using a large spoon to stir up the mix. You could also use a whisk. Just want to make sure that you get it completely stirred up so that you have all the ingredients throughout the mix. Then you just put your mix into a container. So I'm using mason jars with not quite a wide mouth, just a regular mouth. So I'm using this funnel, which works great if you have one of these wide mouth funnels. If you have just a smaller one, that would actually make it harder. So I'm just pouring it in that way, and I packed it in a little bit because I decided to put in a little over four cups of mix. It takes two cups of mix to make a batch, so you want to do at least two cups. Since this is a gift, I'm going to decorate it, 
even if this is just for yourself, you would want to include the recipe and label what's in the jar so you know how to make it and you know what's in the jar. So I'm starting with my fabric to put over the jar lid. And I want to start with the fabric first because it's easier to match my papers and markers to my fabric than it is to match the fabric to my decorations. So I'm just taking this cardboard circle that my family has made because we give a lot of jar gifts away. And I draw that with the pencil on the back because this isn't going to show so it doesn't matter. Just want to make sure you don't use like a marker that's going to bleed through the fabric. And then I'm just using some pinking shears to go around the edge. And I'm trying careful not to cut too fast because I'm trying to line up the pinking shears so that I get a nice cut every time. I printed out the recipe on some cardstock and now I'm going to use my stamping platform and this Lawn Fawn stamp set called Sprinkle with Joy to stamp the sentiment, May Your Holidays Be Sweet. And I'm using some real red ink and it's Stampin' Up ink to stamp my message. These are old Stampin' Up stamp pads. I think the ones they make now are different. I think the lid slides behind or something like that. And a lot of stamp pads, the lid comes off so they're easier to use with your stamping platform. But these stamp pads came out before stamping platforms existed. I'm just using my blending tool to put some Candied Apple Distress ink around the edge of my card because that color matches the fabric really well. Now on this one I'm using a, one of the original foam pads that came with the tool. I'm gradually replacing them with the dome foams because those do blend better but I'm using this felt pad until it wears out. Then I just glue my recipe card onto this piece of Lawn Fawn green snowflake paper. And this comes from their Let It Shine 6x6 paper pad. I thought that goes really well with the fabric. So I'm just gluing my recipe card on with Nuvo Deluxe Glue. Next I'm taking some Heavenly White cardstock and some Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink to stamp some images from Lawn Fawn. And I'll use those to decorate my recipe cards. Now this paper and the ink is Copic friendly and I'll be coloring my images off screen with Copic markers. So first I'm stamping this fox and owl from Jump for Joy. Then stamping the Santa hat from Hats Off to You. And this hat set is a good way to change your characters to fit the holiday or whatever the theme of the card or decoration is. And then I'm using the Baked with Love stamp set to stamp a mixing bowl, eggs, and mixing spoon because of course those will go along well with the pancakes. Now that I finished coloring all my images and cutting them out, I'm ready to finish my card. So first of all, I'm taking a paper punch to punch a hole in my recipe card so I can hang it on my jar. And then I just kind of play with all the stamped images to figure out where I want them. As I'm decorating, I decide what colors look best, so I figure out that I think the green hat looks best with the fox and the red one with the owl. And then also I have to make sure I don't cover up the hole or any of the words. As I'm doing this, I decided it looked great with the animals holding different objects to look like they're making something. So it looks like the fox is mixing up the batter while the owl is bringing him an egg. And then as I was thinking that, I'm thinking, wait a minute, owls lay eggs. Why would he give an, owl, an egg to the fox? But hey, maybe it's a chicken egg and I don't know. I'm overthinking this. On the ball of the hat and the trim, I'm using Nouveau Glitter Accents, which is kind of like a white glitter glue. I'll put a list of all the products that I use in the description below. Some of these will be affiliate links. They don't cost you anything extra to use, but I do get a small commission from any sales that those links generate, and that helps support my website and my videos. As I mentioned earlier, this is part of a YouTube hop with the Christmas collab series, so I'll put a list of all the participants in the description below. Please hop along to all the participants. It's actually a short list, so it probably won't take you too long, and you'll get some more inspiration for some gift-giving ideas. That way hopefully you can get started early and then when December rolls around, 
you'll be able to relax and enjoy the holidays. Then I cut a piece of Lawn Fawn Green Sparkle Cord to tie on my fabric and my card. I did have to let the recipe card dry for a while because of that glitter glue. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. I hope you got some ideas and inspiration for making gifts for your friends and family. If you're not already a subscriber, I'd really appreciate if you can subscribe to my channel. If you are a subscriber, thank you for your continued support. I hope everyone has a wonderful day.